Hey, good evening, and welcome to the Comics Experience Graphic Novel of the Month Club for our Comics Masterpiece uh, Club. This is uh, this is our brand new uh, uh, club where we're looking at uh, comics from the whole history of comics. Um, uh, and this is our, our inaugural edition. Uh, and our book this month, as you can see from what I'm holding, is the fantastic, we love it so much, Preacher. Uh, and we are really, really, really blessed to have uh, Garth Ennis with us here. Uh, hello, Garth. How are hey, you, Brian, my friend? How's it going? It's going thank excellent. You. It's going excellent. Um, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, this should this should be fun. It's it's always fun to talk about comics with you. You did two things with with uh, Hellblazer that I, I you know, I, I think we're out of left field in a way. Um, one was you started aging him in real time. He, he had right. his 40th birthday and then, right. and then he got old and he, he was facing his mor mortality. And this was not a thing that you ever saw in comics. Everybody, you know, like it, 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 the Alan Moore, uh, uh, Hellblazer is he's, he's, he's sting forever young, kind of, right. you know, um, right, right. Uh, what was your thinking there, uh, for, for doing that, for, for grounding him in that reality where you are aging and it matters and things go forward? I, I should be honest and say that actually at that point I am again following Jamie's lead because early on in Jamie's run, I think about issue nine or 10, Constantine finds himself practically homeless, staggering into a bar somewhere in, a, in a, an American city yeah. uh, where the plot has taken him at this point. And he happens to mention that it's his 36th birthday. Mm. And he says something like, I'm 36 years old and totally shot to hell. So Jamie had actually uh, flicked that domino over. I was just following on from him, really. But it seemed like the natural thing to do. I mean, the, the 40th birthday party was a fun issue. Um, it's one of one of the many aspects of Hellblazer, I think, that sets it apart from from other comics and other characters. It's it's a, a regular guy, an ordinary guy. Yes, he is. He knows magic. Sure, that's true. But in every other aspect of his life, he's like you and me. He's like anybody else. Uh, he suffers through the same frustrations. Um, he's subject to the same occasionally deeply unpleasant problems. Of course, what, what you're doing here is you're kind of writing yourself or the next guy into a corner. And I'm pretty sure that I think Hellblazer ran for 300 issues. I, I doubt he was 60 by the end of it. Yeah, I, actually, I actually feel like he was by the end of it. I, I maybe I'm wrong that? about that. I, I think that they did like acknowledge that at some point, right? Uh, right. You know, it would have, yeah. It would have been Pete Milligan by the end. So fair play to Pete. Yeah, he would. Yeah, have yeah. Been yeah. yeah. Well, especially because you know American comics. I mean, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne are 29 forever. Forever. <laughs> They're always 29. You know, uh, and so. Um, yeah, for for John to turn forty and then that be an actual thing, was, yeah, was, yeah. was it was it was it was revelatory in a way that shouldn't be because it's so banal. Yeah, you know? yeah. I know what you mean. It's it's possibly again that hubris creeping in, or or again just ignorance because it's like, mm. oh, you don't do this in American comics. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Is is there is there a much of a difference between ignorance and hubris? <laughs> whatever gets the job done that's what i would say where did preacher come from what uh, it, uh, it, it's a it's a melange of a lot of things where it's where did you me. where where did you how, how did you pitch this um preacher came about essentially because once steve dillon uh, had come on board hell wizard as yeah. a regular artist and he and i had become uh, a successful team I think mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Vertigo wanted to see what we do next. And they essentially said, we'll take whatever you, whatever creator owned book you want to do next. And so in practical terms, that's where preacher came from. And I spent, I suppose from late 93 to mid 94, when I started actually writing it, 
coming up with Preacher. Um, and talk about blundering your way down the path, my goodness. Uh, I had a vague sense that I wanted it to be an American story. Um, you can see it's kind of vertigo trappings in a way because there are angels and demons in there. Heaven and hell are places you can visit. But I think it's a very American story and it's a very movie inspired story like like a lot of my stuff it doesn't come from other comics not really it comes from movies um in this case most obviously uh wild at heart uh the romance uh the the, the lovers will do anything for each other you know their romance will set the world on fire um near dark the kind of realistic down and dirty treatment of vampires uh and of course unforgiven uh where you have this the old west personified in this mythical gunfighter who steps directly out of history uh walker colts blazing and uh and will not go away um that's essentially where preacher comes from that's the starting point of course you know at the time I'm just stumbling from one idea to another, slowly gluing them onto this this central notion. Uh, it takes a while to come up with the name Preacher. It takes a while to come up with the names of the lead characters. I knew I wanted it to be a Western, but a contemporary one. I knew I wanted it to be a heavily American story. I knew I wanted there to be a lot of movie-style action in it. That's more or less where we started. So, um, uh, had you, had you spent much time in America at that point? Um, let's see. I first came to New York in 92, spent most of that spring, summer and fall here. Um, and had then visited on and off, uh, two or three times a year in the, the intervening period. Uh, so when I started to pull preacher together, I really only had a sort of few months experience of the country, uh, of actually being in the country. Culturally, of course, I'd been exposed to uh, America since I was a kid. Sure. So, so why do you think uh, that, and, and, and again, probably the answer is hubris, but why do you think as a, a young man from a small town in Ireland that you can comment on America? That, that you understand America, you know? Yeah. Um, it's probably because for for me, America was love at first sight. And it's pro at the time, I'm probably not thinking in terms of uh, having the arrogance to comment on a nation that isn't mine so much as offering this thing uh, to a place and a culture that I've, that I've fallen in love with. That in a way I've always loved since I started watching movies as a little kid. 